Be seated, please. Our first reading from the Psalm, Psalm 51, verses 1 to 12, will be read by Mrs. Michelle Cisahai P. Psalm 51, 1 to 12, verses 1 to 12, entitled, A Prayer for Forgiveness. Be merciful to me, O God, because of your constant love, because of your great mercy, wipe away my sins, wash away all my evil, and make me clean from my sin. I recognize my faults. I am always conscious of my sins. I have sinned against you, only against you, and done what you consider evil. So you are right in judging me. You are justified in condemning me. I have been evil from the day I was born. From the time I was conceived, I have been sinful. Sincerity and truth are what you require. Fill my mind with your wisdom. Remove my sin and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear the sounds of joy and gladness. And though you have crushed me and broken me, I will be happy once again. Close your eyes to my sins and wipe out my, all my evil. Create a pure heart in me, O God, and put a new and loyal spirit in me. Do not banish me from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Give me again the joy that comes from your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Glory be to the Father and Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us come to God in prayer. Lord, our God, great, eternal, wonderful, you give life to our soul. You help those who come to you. You give hope to those who appeal to you. Set our hearts and the consciences at peace so that we may bring our prayers to you confidently and without fear. Dear God, we come to you acknowledging that we have sinned and strayed from your ways, following the material desires of our hearts. We confess the heartbreak and the worry we have caused, the blindness that is not even aware of sinning, the pride that dares not admit it is wrong, the righteousness that knows no fault. Father in heaven, forgive us of our foolish ways. Wash and cleanse us of these and all our sins with the blood that flowed on Calvary's cross. Help us, heal us, Cleanse us by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. This we ask in Christ's name we pray. Amen. God has exalted Jesus Christ with his own right hand as the only leader and savior to grant repentance and forgiveness of sins. Therefore, all those who are servants of Jesus Christ believe and repent are assured of God's pardon and forgiveness. Be assured that your sins are forgiven. Sing them over again to me, number 498. 498, sing them over again to me.
Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the Blessed One gives to all wonderful words of life. Wonderful words of life, all so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful words, wonderful words. Wonderful words of life Sweetly echo the gospel call Wonderful words of life Offer pardon and peace to all Wonderful words of life Jesus only Sanctify forever Beautiful words Wonderful words Wonderful words of life Beautiful words Wonderful words Wonderful words of life second scripture reading is taken from Luke chapter 1 verses 39 to 56. This will be done by Mr. Johnson. Second reading taken from Luke 1 39 to 56 entitled Mary visits Elizabeth. Soon afterward, Mary got ready and hurried off to a town in the hill country of Judea. She went into Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby moved within her. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and said, in a loud voice, you are the most blessed of all women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Why should this great thing happen to me, that my Lord's mother comes to visit me? For as soon as I heard your greeting, the baby within me jumped with gladness. How happy you are to believe that the Lord's message to you will come true. Mary said, My heart praises the Lord. My soul is glad because of God my Savior, for he has remembered me, his lowly servant. From now on, all the people will call me happy because of the great things the mighty God has done for me. His name is holy from one generation to another. He shows mercy to those who honor him. He has stretched out his mighty arm and scattered the proud with all their plans. He has brought down mighty kings from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. 
He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has kept the promise he made to our ancestors and has come to the help of his servant Israel. He has remembered to show mercy to Abraham and to all his descendants forever. Mary stayed about three months with Elizabeth and then went back home. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come before him. As the offering is received, we join our voices together. Let there be love shared among us. Let's join together in the offertory chorus. Let there be love shed among us. Let there be love in our eyes. May now your love sweep this nation. Cause us, O oh Lord, to arise. Give us a fresh understanding of brotherly love that is real. Let there be love shed among us. Let there be love. Let there be hope shed among us. Let there be hope in our eyes. May now your hope sweep this nation. Cause us, O oh Lord, to arise. Give us a fresh understanding of brotherly love that is real. Let there be hope shed among us. Let there be hope. Let there be joy shed among us. Let there be joy in our eyes. May now your joy sweep this nation. Cause us, O oh Lord, to arise. Give us a fresh understanding of brotherly love that is real. Let there be joy shed among us. Let there be joy. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, to give you thanks and praise. All good gifts come from you, dear Lord, and from these riches we bring this offering. Help us to use it for the furtherance of your purpose in this place and for the benefit of those in need. We ask this through your Son, our, Jesus, our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave it all he had, that we might know life in all its fullness. Amen. We now invite our secretary, Mr. Kenrick Hammerbach, to bring it this morning. The assistant secretary, Mrs. Indra Mohammed. Pleasant good morning and a warm welcome is extended to all worshiping this morning. It's a beautiful Sunday morning and it's good to see so many of us here in the house of the Lord. The following are the morning's announcements. The St. Andrews Theological College will be offering the course Christian Education in January 2021. This course is mandatory for all teaching applicants for the primary, Presbyterian Primary School Board of Education. So those of us who know of anyone who is interested in teaching at one of our primary schools, you can tell them about this course, those who are not here this morning. This course is also recommended for those who are interested in teaching our Sunday school children. At the end of the course, certificates will be awarded. The dates haven't been given to us as yet, so as soon as we receive those dates, we let you know. But those who are interested can still submit their names to the secretary. This evening, there will be virtual caroling at 5.30 p.m. via Zoom, ID number 5.30. So we ask you to join in and sing some carols. Christmas morning service is at 7 a.m., so we look forward to seeing all of you here on Christmas morning. If the church is too full, we would, some of us would go across to the hall. But let us come out on Christmas morning, worship our Savior born. We say special thanks this morning to Ethan Cesar Hyde for the PowerPoint presentation. These are the announcements for today. And we let the candle of joy this morning. So may the God of joy remain in our hearts today and for the rest of our lives. Do have a blessed and holy week. We have an anthem now. Number 123 in our book of praise, my soul gives glory to my God. After which we are indeed privileged to have an elder of the Arima Pastoral Region and the secretary of the Arima Local Board, Mr. Kenrick Kamabach, delivering God's message. Number 123, my soul gives glory to my God. Let's all stand. My soul gives glory to my God, my heart pours out its praise. 
God lifted up my lowliness in many marvelous ways. My God has done great things for me. Yes, holy is this name. All people will declare me blessed and blessings they shall claim. From age to age to all who fear, such mercy love imparts, dispensing justice far and near, dismissing selfish hearts. Love cast the mighty from their thrones, promotes the insecure, leaves hungry spirits satisfied, the rich seem suddenly poor. Praise God whose loving covenant supports those in distress. Remembering past promises with present faithfulness. Please be seated. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. And now, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought on a new cultural shift that we refer to as the new normal. Some people now work from home. Church meetings are virtual and our worship services are streaming online. This pandemic is not an interruption in our lives. It is a disruption that has upended life as we know it. As we try to figure out how to navigate COVID-19, we are reminded that it is not the first time people of faith have gone through a pandemic. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 says, What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Humanity have all experienced it before. Goodbye, 2020. What a year. Has there ever been a year filled with more uncertainty, at least in our lifetime? You know what's on the list. We've all been living it for almost a year. Global pandemic, economic recession, church and school disruption, mass unemployment, political division, racial reckoning, cultural upheaval, widespread flooding. Did I miss anything? As you scroll through the news feed on social media, 
or skim the news headlines. It's enough to sink anyone into deep de depression and discouragement. When this happens, we begin to question God's sovereignty and whether he is in control. Some may ask, why does God allow such tragedies to steal our joy? When we ask such quest questions, we don't only show a lack of faith, but we also demonstrate a lack of understanding that Satan is Lord of this world, and he disguises himself as an angel of light to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But that is for another time. It's been a tough year. If there's ever a year we need the joy of Christmas, this is it. My friends, if there's ever a year we need Christ, this is that year. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. He has entered our world and fills us with joy. The message for this third Sunday of Advent is rediscover Christmas, finding joy in our discouragement. Someone said that children are a bundle of joy, and that is so true. The joy we exhibited when our first child was born is boundless and uncontainable. And just like the season of Advent, we waited with eager anticipation for the birth of our first child. Joy overflows, and when you have experienced joy, you, went, you want to share it with the people around you. Joy bubbles over and touches everyone it comes into contact with. In our scripture reading this morning, Luke tells the, so the story of Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth. They were the parents of John the Baptist, who was sent to prepare the way for Jesus the Messiah. Zechariah was a priest who received a visit from an angel that told him, Do not be afraid, Zachariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. The catch was that Zachariah and Elizabeth were old. Elizabeth was beyond childbearing years, and the couple had never been able to have children. Besides the shock from talking to an angel, Zachariah couldn't get over the fact that it was possible for his wife to have a baby. But joy is contagious. It finds a way. Joy is our feel-good emotion. And when it's there, it's going to find a way out. Sometimes it's quick to burst out. And sometimes it takes a while to work its, its way through the disappointments and discouragements in our lives. Maybe that's the way it was for Mary and Elizabeth two miraculous mothers-to-be in Luke's Christmas account. Both women were facing a mixture of emotions in their unexpected pregnancies. Behind Elizabeth's elation were decades of shame, scorn, and crushed dreams of having children. Maybe that's why she spent five months in seclusion. Behind Mary's wonder were judgment and scorn from others, and certainly some fear and confusion of her own. Maybe that's why Mary hurried to the hill country 
away from the judgmental eyes of her neighbors. But when the two women united, joy erupted. Elizabeth's baby, John the Baptist, leapt in the womb. The Holy Spirit filled Elizabeth, and her, as her joy overflowed, she greeted Mary with a beautiful and insightful blessing. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ear, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. Joy was overflowing, and true to its nature, joy was contagious. Mary burst into song, praising God and rejoicing. Her response to Elizabeth's blessing is known in our Presbyterian liturgy as the Magnificat. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. Luke 1, 46 to 48. Already, Emmanuel, God with us, was unleashing joy on earth. And already his joy began rippling outwards. When Elizabeth gave birth to John three months later, the joy of her miracle spread to her village and family. We are told in verse 57, her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy and they shared her joy. All the fear, uncertainty, and pain faded in, in, faded in the face of encouragement and joy. How is your sense of joy this season? Who can you reach out to in order to find encouragement or to encourage? Elizabeth and Mary reveal several things about joy and its influence that we can take home, that we can take away and apply to our own lives. Firstly, joy defies our circumstances. What would you and I give to know such joy? To see the scars and shame of our lives washed away so dramatically. Most likely, we wouldn't see it happen through such an obvious miracle. But the joy Elizabeth experienced is available to us. This is the joy brought into our world by Jesus, God with us. And though we are living long past his time on earth, his life and his joy are available to us now. It's a joy that permeates our souls, a joy that is rooted in gratitude, meaning, and hope fulfilled, especially when it is based on a relationship with our Creator. Secondly, joy. We can lose our joy, but joy can also be restored. I have experienced Jesus' restorative joy on numerous occasions. I rejoice when I reflect on God's healing and deliverance in my own life. Since as a fallen person in a broken state, I am unable to survive outside of God's grace. Sometimes we need <clears throat> a restoration of joy just like King David did when he wrote Psalm 51. His famous prayer followed the darkest days of his life 
when he committed the two cardinal sins of adultery and murder. David, considered a man after God's heart, had finally hit rock bottom and poured out his confession and remorse to God, asking for forgiveness and renewal. He longed for a restoration of the joy of his relationship with God. You see, my friends, sin separates us from God, and we all, knew, we all need a cleansing fresh start. So much can sink our hearts and sap our joy, whether it's our own sin or the busyness and pressures of the holidays. Sometimes we need the honesty of confession and the simplicity of quiet reflection when we pour out our hearts to God as David did. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Psalm 51, 10 to 12. Psalm 51 teaches us that we can lose the joy of salvation. But no matter where we've been or what we have done, Jesus is here welcoming us with restorative joy. In Advent and in Christmas, there is a miracle for all of us. The miracle of God come to earth to be with us, to heal us, to forgive us, to redeem us and to restore all our pain, restore us from our pain and to turn it into good. This is a cause for joy even in our darkest days. Since we can experience restorative joy, then joy is a choice. And that's the third thing we can apply in our lives. Next Sunday is the fourth Sunday of Advent, when we would rediscover love in our differences. We would see that love is a choice. We can choose to love someone in the same way we can choose joy. Why? Because joy gives us the strength to persevere even when our circumstances look bleak and we are surrounded by cold, cold, hard reality. Does it make sense to feel joy when we face trials? Of course not. But when we choose joy, when we choose to look with thankfulness for what God will do even in our darkest days, we can find the strength to persevere another day and we continue to grow stronger in our times of trial. It's not easy. That's why Paul said it twice. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Philippians 4 and 4. It's a command, my friends. Paul knew we needed reminders often. He had certainly lived through the difficulties of prison, beatings, hatred, ridicule, ridicule, loneliness, injustice, and more. Yet Paul continued to choose the action of joy, of joy to rejoice and to place his focus on God. Even when life felt like nothing but a rock and a hard place. <clears throat> Friends, let's choose to make the season a season of joy. Let's rejoice as we figuratively await the arrival of Christ and let's celebrate his birth with joy. God is with us and so joy is with us. A joy that flows deep within our spirits and outwards because our King, our Savior, is with us. 
always loving, always working, even in the midst of any hardship we may face. And lastly, who is the source of our joy? Joy comes from God with us. Jesus is the source of our joy. Peter called it an inexpressible and glorious joy that is part of, of the inheritance we are receiving in Christ. With his life and the promise of eternal life beyond this world, we find the deep kind of joy that fills us no matter the pain that we still face on this earth. James said it well at the beginning of his book. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. James 1, 2 to 4. Joy understands that there is more than meets the eye, that God is at work always, even in the tough circumstances of life, and that eventually God will make everything right. Because of that, we can experience joy in the here and now, no matter how bad the here and now looks and feels. What are the circumstances we are facing right now as we journey towards Christmas? What are the circumstances that are stealing our joy? As I was researching the contents of, for this sermon, I, uh, I came across some advice from a prominent pastor and authoritative author, Rick Warren, on how to let go of loneliness. Do you know that a person can be surrounded by family and friends and yet experience loneliness? I would like to read an excerpt. It's entitled, How to Let Go of Loneliness, and I think it's relevant for this Christmas season. Christmas time is, for most part, an enjoyable season for most people. But for many of us, it's a season of painful memories, depression, and loneliness. Sometimes we choose to isolate ourselves from others. And sometimes we face loneliness through no fault of our own. Loneliness is so painful that people will try anything to relieve it. We medicate on drugs, alcohol, sexual promiscuity, pornography, and other ad addictive behavior. Loneliness can be especially dangerous to people in recovery. So how do we deal with loneliness? How do we let go of it? One, utilize your time well. Make the best of a bad situation. Resist the temptation to do nothing. If life gives you a lemon, Make lemonade. Make the most of what you've got. Loneliness tends to paralyze. Think of the creative way to take advantage of the situation. While we should be careful not to medicate with busyness, it is important to be good, to be good stewards of the time we spend alone. We are dangerous when we are bored. And we get discouraged when we aren't using our time in a purpose, purposeful way. Two, 
Minimize the hurt. Don't ignore it, but don't rehearse it either. Deal with your hurt in bold and honest ways, but find ways to shift your focus to, help, to helping and serving others. Resentment is essentially, is essentially the choice to hang on to what someone else took away from us. Forgiveness is letting them off the hook and cutting the strings they have on our emotional health. Three, recognize God's presence. Where is God when you are lonely? He's right there with you. There's no place that you are that God is not. God is everywhere. You just need to open your eyes and see. Jesus said, I will never leave you, no matter where you go. God's presence is with us. Open your eyes. Lastly, emphasize the needs of others. Focus outwardly on other people. Get your eyes off of yourself. Quit having a pity party. Find others who are in pain and think of ways to help them. Stop building walls and start building bridges. And I, can think of a, I, I cannot think of a better time than during the Christmas season because there are a lot of lonely people at Christmas and they are hurting. Love is the antidote to loneliness. A lot of our loneliness is really a spiritual vacuum. When you invite Christ into your life and ask the Spirit to fill you, he puts his presence in you, a presence that will never, never leave you. As Jesus explained to his disciples about his coming death and resur re resurrection, so with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. As we turn our eyes expectantly to Jesus in this Advent season, and as we walk with him towards the day when he, he will come again, and fulfill his healing work, we can experience his joy in the process. And we know with confidence that an even greater unending joy awaits us one day. One day we will receive it in full, and yet now we find hope, peace, joy, and love in what Jesus has done and what we know he will faithfully do in the future. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's come to God in a word of prayer. We thank you, merciful God and Father, that you have brought us to know you and your Son by your Holy Spirit and word, and have caused your word to be proclaimed to us. Grant that we, having received Christ Jesus the Lord, may, may live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the feet, as we were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness and joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us... Let us now... Pray our prayer, our people, prayer of the people and the Lord's Prayer. And we shall all recite the Lord's Prayer after. O oh God, you have called us to follow the way of the one who was anointed, who was anointed, to bring good news to the poor, release to the captives. Recovery of sight to the blind and to let the oppressed go free. Empower us 
to be faithful disciples of Jesus. In this season of Advent, help us discern where you are already at work to renew and repair your good, broken creation. Indeed, during these tumultuous days of racial, political, and social reckoning, help us to overcome paralyzing fear in our personal lives, in our communities, and in our world. We pray also for the world of nations, especially for those places where violence is wrecking havoc, havoc upon human lives and your good creation. We pray for global solidarity as we continue to grapple with a raging pandemic. We pray for healthcare workers around the world as they tend to the sick and for all who are desperately ill and their families. We pray for those in our communities who have lost jobs, earnings, and loved ones during this relentless public health challenge. Help us to be agents of your love and care to those who are suffering. We pray especially for wise discernment by our nation's elected leadership, that they would work together constructively to find ways to aid those most afflicted. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is 153, Joy to the World. Truth and grace 
and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love the choral benediction strong and true no he will guide you in all you do go now in love and sure you believe reach out to others so But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them sing, ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. And now, may the God of hope, peace, joy, and love sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit, soul, and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and have a blessed week ahead.